Okay guys, today we're going to be breaking down the Winter Forester's Kit. Now this kit is essentially my everyday carry for bushcrafting and survival practice during the winter. And it's a little bit different, but for the most part pretty similar to earlier uh, carry updates. But I thought it just enough has changed and there are some important seasonal factors that I thought would be pretty interesting to cover. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it without any real order to it. So first off, getting to the PSK. Now when I did my video on this PSK, a lot of people actually watched it and were commentating on the fact that there weren't any uh, survival tools per se like a knife or like a container within this kit. And the reason why that is, of course, is because this PSK is not really ever carried solely by itself. It has a lot of tools in condensed fashion to help with survival, but it itself is not a complete standalone unit. So if you haven't watched that video uh, talking about my PSK, definitely go check it out. It covers basically everything that is in and on this kit. So for the sake of conversation, we will not be going over this. But the PSK is obviously something that I carry year-round, and the contents by and large don't really change. So the next thing that I carry on body is this silky gomboy. Now this is a 210 curve, and uh, you know there are a bunch of different flavors of gomboys out there, but this is the gomboy that I carry. It works super well and cuts through wood insanely fast, and this is still a fairly pocketable saw. I throw this in one of the larger pockets on my Fiel Raven Vita Pros, and it fits just fine. So this is what I carry for a saw on body, and of course in the winter, similar to the summer, you know, being able to deal with wood and process wood in a reasonably fast fashion is always appreciated. So of course I've gone over this little knife a few times uh, on the channel, but of course this is what I usually carry in a pocket, and this is of course the GEC Pocket Carver, and this little blade here is just for carving. Now, admittedly, I don't tend to use this too much in the winter because a lot of my bushcrafting kind of changes in the winter, so I'm not really slowing down to do a lot of carving and fine-skilled tasks, but I do carry it just in case I want to sit by a campfire and do some carving. And of course, it is in a little pocket slip that I have modified in a slight way uh, to kind of close it. So when the pocket slip is like this, the knife can come out, but there's a lot of tension on it, so it doesn't usually slip out of the pocket slip too easy. Okay, so now moving over to the workhorse knife, and that is still my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Now, admittedly, I do use the Mora Bushcraft Black a lot, and usually when I'm running Fiel Raven Vita Pros, there's a small pocket, and I've gone over in the review and other videos on the Vita Pro. There's this kind of pocket that you can slide Mora knives with their sheath into, so a lot of use and kind of duty use will come out of the Mora Bushcraft Black, but my go-to bushcrafting knife is still, and pretty much always will be, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This knife here uh, is just a super hard knife to beat, and uh, for me personally, I've owned a, I've owned two Bushcrafters, and uh, this, these blades just fit my hand really well, and the blade length is just perfect for me. Blade shape is perfect, grind is perfect, everything about the Bushcrafter really creates a knife that I don't really want to go away from because it just works super well. And the CPM 3V blade is really nice, uh, a really nice compliment because it means that it does not go dull pretty much ever. And of course, to complement the Bushcrafter, I do have a ferro rod. This is a Light My Fire Army, which is pretty much the only ferro rods I use, but I have one army here. Uh, just hanging from the back of the sheath because unfortunately on this sheath there is no fire uh, ferro rod loop and uh, I do like this sheath quite a bit so I just kind of modified it a little bit to work for me. So jumping over to some winter specific pieces the first part is light of course here in Alaska in the winter as a whole we don't have that much daylight usually you know about five hours tops so having some kind of extra light is usually pretty critical and this is a Petzl Tactica RGB 
And uh, what I like about the RGB is that it is just your normal Tactica, but it also has the different, um, so it has your different light modes. So you can see here that I can swap through, you know, the different color spectrum. Of course, it does have a white light, but it has all of these other lights. And so um, it has a lot of different options to it that I like, but primarily I use obviously the white light and the red light to help kind of preserve night vision. So this thing does have a bunch of options, but primarily I use the white light and the red light. And once again, it's just a headlamp. It works really well for being a headlamp, and I don't have many complaints about the Tactica. Petzl's a great company uh, for making headlamps. They do a good job in my opinion, and this is just the go-to headlamp that I usually use, or at least have on body in case I am caught out in the dark and I do need something to help me see at night. So that is the kind of winter specific light source. Next thing I have, now some people might find this a little bit funny that I'm talking about mittens, but I actually don't usually use mittens unless I need them. So that's why they're kind of a part of my kit. And you've seen in different videos, if you've watched the channel, you'll notice that I usually have these uh, hanging off of my body with these lanyards. And so usually I will have mittens on me but not necessarily will I be wearing them. And for the mittens themselves, these are just Manzella Mastodon mittens. Uh, there's not necessarily any particular type that I recommend. I just like the Mastodons because they're a 300 gram fill uh, synthetic down uh, mitten and they get super, super warm. I don't know the magic of these mittens, but they're reasonably affordable and they do their job very well. Like they always, every time I put my hands in, into these mittens, not only do my hands warm up very fast, but they usually get actually a little bit too warm, which is kind of what I like for mittens because with mittens, you know, you can pop them on and off so easily that if you're doing things that require, you know, more tactile um, kind of requirements, I usually carry like Mechanics Insulated Originals, and then I'll have these Mastodon mittens kind of as a supplement so that if my hands get too cold, just throw my hands in these mittens for a little while and then all good. So that is the other, so that's the other winter specific kind of element to the Winter Foresters kit. So then next to that, and not necessarily in a particular order, is the gun. Now of course I have multiple different guns, but usually what I will use for the winter is either my Glock 21 or my CZP-10C. So as I was saying, I usually use either a Glock 21 or a CZP-10C, something that's easy to carry and has a reasonable uh, magazine capacity because the reality is in the winter, at least here in Alaska, we don't really have to deal with bears or large game like that. The more pressing threat would be things like wolves. So that is the firearm that I usually carry, or the firearms, I should say. So getting to the last of it, if that's possible, is going to be the hatchet and the axe. And of course, one more thing after that. But the hatchet that I'm carrying is the Grand Forest Brooks Wildlife Hatchet. I still absolutely love this tiny hatchet. It's small, but it gets so much work done. It has such a sharp blade. Really do love this little guy. And uh, there will be more videos of featuring this little hatchet in the future. Oftentimes, you do just see it in the videos being carried but really it does get a lot of use. It's hard to explain just all the little things that I end up pulling out this hatchet for and just you know doing quick swipes, getting a lot of work done with it. So that is the hatchet I carry. And the ax that I carry is a Holtzbrook Anabi. And some people might ask why I carry, or I do usually get comments asking you know why I carry a hatchet and an ax. And the reason why is that this axe, especially this 20 inch axe, is very easy for me to throw in a backpack and have it for doing larger tasks and larger um, different crafts. But having the hatchet is something that I can have on my body, you know, have it in a little hammer loop and carry this on my person so that if I need to do something quick or fast, I can pull this out, you know, do what I need to do and put it away. Where the axe is usually living in a pack that I bring in and it's small enough that I can really easily, you know, throw this in a backpack, kind of forget that I have it, but have the capabilities uh, to step up into a larger tool if I need it. So I'm not carrying both of these necessarily on my body, but I'm carrying the hatchet on me 
and the axe in a pack so I can use the larger tool if I need it but I have the smaller tool for more of the mundane kind of realistic tasks that I'm encountering and working in, working with sorry so that is the kind of breakdown for the hatchet and the axe and why I carry both but like I said Holtzbrook Anabi and GBA Wildlife Hatchet are my kind of tools per se Okay, so last but not least is my container. Now I do have some variants and sometimes I will carry a stainless steel Nalgene alongside this, but the one piece that I always carry for sure is my much beloved and much well used Vargo bot, or I should say Vargo titanium bot, because they now make these in stainless steel, but this is a Vargo titanium bot. I've had this for ton, not tons, but I've had this for years and uh, it's a super light, <coughs> It's a super lightweight uh, container, and of course I do have the titanium bot hanger, as you guys have seen probably in quite a few videos, that uh, it just makes for a really simple, over the fire kind of uh, cook system, or just if I want to heat up some water, make some spruce tip tea, or make some coffee or tea, just really this bot can do a million different things and so this is what I use for my container once again this does primarily live in my backpack so I'm not necessarily carrying this on body but this is something that I make sure that is always a part of the kit for my winter forester kit so these are the different tools um, that I'm carrying for winter once again some of it is a little bit more specific some of it a little bit more generic but these are definitely solid pieces of kit that I uh, make sure to have in the winter. So let me know what you guys think. If it's a little, if it's a little repetitive and or redundant, it might come across that way. But I definitely enjoy and use each one of these tools and they all kind of bring their own usefulness to the table when it comes to my bushcrafting time out, especially in the winter especially in the winter. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, God bless, and I'm out.